Good morning, everybody. We're out at uh, Clay Pit Pond at Belmont. It has been months since I've been outside, and uh, and you know, <laughs> uh, makes me think, what the heck am I doing in New England? I think everybody says that. A lot of you know that uh, my wife and I do like to uh, live by coastally. For the past couple of years, we've not done extensive time in California, but uh, you know, winter past couple years has reminded me I need to make that happen. So uh, for those of you that and everybody asks me too. You, you all ask me when we talk on the phone, client, even clients, you know, say, you guys in California? I said, no, you know we're here. We've been stuck here, bought a house here and everything. But, uh, uh, you know, we come out, it's great to get some nature. Uh, you can see uh, Belmont High School behind me. I've got my uh, camera backed up against the uh, Veterans Memorial Circle, which they're planning to redo. They're doing some fundraising for that right now. Uh, I'll find the link for that and put that on the video bottom, down below the video if you're interested in that. But uh, today I wanted to uh, discuss a couple of topics. Before uh, the main topic I want to discuss today is the well, the exception to the 10% penalty uh, for uh, quadro divorce settlement um, of retirement funds. Before I get to that, though, I want to share an interesting uh, conversation I had. Someone contacted me through my website and asked me uh, uh, about multiple rollovers. And so those of you that follow me know I wrote about this uh, some months back where the IRS um, has interpreted the uh, once per year rollover rule to count for all your IRAs. So for example, in the eyes of the IRS, in the tax law, if you have multiple IRA accounts, not 401k, 403b, but multiple IRA accounts, they're looked upon as one IRA. So when it comes time to take your required minimum distribution at age 70 and a half, you gotta take the entire, all the balances and add them up together and take out some money, you know, enough money on the combined balance. If you are making contributions and you're younger, you can, in your annual contribution limit is $5,500. It's not $5,500 to all five of your IRAs, it's combined, $5,500. And so if you have five different IRAs, you could put, you know, $1,100 in each of those accounts, but you cannot put $5,500 into each. So your IRA is considered like one big lump sum. And so therefore the rollover rules apply the same way. And if you, uh, there was once a year rollover rule. So in other words, um, and step back a little bit, there's rollovers and transfers. A rollover is when you take the money cash and then 60 days later, or within 60 days, you put it into a new IRA. So that's a rollover. You actually take possession of the funds. And you're only allowed to do that once a year. But what some people were doing was, if they had five different IRA accounts, they would do a rollover with one account, a rollover with another account, and say, oh, I only did once a year. Uh, and that's true for that one account. But remember, with, with IRAs, the tax law interprets it all as one big account. So this woman contacted me and said, I, I did three IRA rollovers this year. I took the money, put it into a new CD, took the money out again, put it into another CD. Is that a problem? And after studying her situation, yes, uh, had to tell her it was. She um, did too many rollovers, and how that's treated is when you do more than one rollover in a year, all that money becomes taxable. You know, so if you have $50,000 in a IRA CD, and you roll that over to a, um, not transfer directly, but roll it over, you take possession of the cash, and then roll it into another bank IRA CD, that's okay, but you do it a third time, that $50,000 now is fully taxable and you gotta add that to your income. You've pretty much blown up your IRA. So, uh, interesting conversation. I thought that was a good uh, anecdotal point on something we wrote about. Now time to talk about the main point of today's talk or the point I wanted to get to, which is uh, qualified domestic relations orders and their, um, the exception to the penalty. So, here's the situation. You're, you're, you get, you're undergoing a divorce and in the settlement, uh, you are uh, deemed to get half of the, let's say half of your ex-spouse's, soon to be ex-spouse's 401k. And uh, that's under a qualified direct uh, domestic relations order, a quadro, as you know, we like to say in our industry. Anyway, so what a lot of people don't realize is that at any age, that money you receive in the quadro settlement is not gonna be penalized. So as you know, when you're younger and you take money out of a retirement account early, you get a penalty in addition to the tax. Well, in this situation, there's no penalty. So from our perspective, why this is, could be helpful to you is, is if you're younger and you're looking to, um, um, you know, you need something to supplement you. Let's say you, you, you have a divorce, you need to supplement the income and you just received half of your ex-spouse's 401k and you have $300,000. You can actually touch that money without penalty. 
Um, it's taxable as income, but <clears throat> there's no 10% penalty. So um, there's some help there. Now, in this situation, uh, you have usually have a few options to take. And excuse me, the sun is in my face. I like that, it's making me squint. Hope you don't mind. I enjoy sun in my face, getting a little bit of vitamin D. You know, I say five minutes of sunlight is all you need a day to get your vitamin D. Uh, that's what uh, um, the people I like to follow tell me, my, my medical uh, advisors. So um, anyway, so if you're sitting by the TV, stick your hand in the sun. Well, you know, let that hang out under the, <laughs> into the sun if you can't get outside. But uh, there's, there's usually three ways you could take your money out of a plan like that. So here's what happens. You, your ex has a 401k. And under the quadro, they create a split account. So it's, let's say it was a $500,000 balance. They split it, and then the, uh, at the 401k, they create an account for you, your uh, quadro 401k balance. So it's 250, you have 250, your ex is 250. Typically, you can either have choices of rolling that over um, and then cashing it out, or interestingly, um, and this is, this is another anecdotal example from a recent case, or taking a monthly check. Problem is, the uh, problem with some of this stuff is, is before you go thinking you're going to spend the money, realize that uh, the plan document of the 401k also has a lot of say as to what happens with the money. So it's not just the tax rules; the plan determines what happens. So, um, in this particular case, uh, the plan document said that she could take the money. Some plans actually don't allow you to touch the money until the other spouse leaves. So you can't roll the money over. You know, if you're under age 59 and a half and your ex who's working there cannot roll the money over unless they leave, that means you can't either. So they, there's a lot of plan, there are a lot of plans that apply the rules to the, to the ex-spouse to the, the same way they'd be applied to the person, you know, the spouse who's working at the firm. <clears throat> so know that, but in this particular case, recently, anecdotally, uh, the plan allowed uh, the client I'm working with to uh, either roll the money over, take a lump sum in cash, or monthly. What would be nice is her being able to withdraw as she saw fit, and leaving the account balance there to give her flexibility, but they didn't allow that. She can either take a monthly check, you know, for life, or lump sum cash out and pay taxes on it, or roll it to her IRA. Now let's look at these options. Cash out may make sense if the balance is small, uh, if it's if it's if you need the cash this year, etc. Large balance though is is remember that this money gets added to your 1040 to your tax return. This could put you in a much higher tax bracket, so you have to be careful. Okay. So think about that before you cash out any lump sum. There's, there's going to be taxable consequence. Even though there's no penalty, this could, you know, a large lump sum could put you into the 33% tax bracket, for example. So rolling it over, there'd be no tax consequence then. No penalty, no current taxation. But if you're under age 59 and a half, now this money is in your IRA, and if you go to touch it, you will pay a 10% penalty on any withdrawals, which means you've got to go to some other... Uh, uh, tactics like 72T, which I will link below the video, or something like that to touch the money. And therefore, that might be restrictive. And the last option, the monthly check, um, yeah, you know, I mean, it sounds good, but then you're locked into this monthly payment stream forever. And then, you know, uh, let's say you're 50 years old, and in 10 years, you might want access to the lump sum when you're 59 and a half, and you just can't because you locked yourself into this thing. So, um, the good news is there are ex that there's no 10% penalty on these options. The downside is you still have to do some thinking and planning. You can't just start winging it. So uh, these are some options. The other general uh, pitfall to all these things, to spending the money early, um, so the plus is you might need some of that cash now. It might be helpful to you. Let's say your income is $4,000 a month and you can draw another $3,000 a month from your ex's 401k. That might be what you need, especially if you have custody of the kids and you're taking care of things, um, you know, and that's such. But the downside, the other, the, all, the always the downside with this stuff from, a, from any time of any kind of financial planning perspective is you are spending money now that you could use later for retirement. So just be careful about that too. So please take the whole picture into account when, it, when it's uh, in terms of, uh, you know, whether you should be spending retirement money or not. You know, should you be allowing this money to grow more for retirement or should you be spending it? So um, I'm curious in your situation, how, uh, are you facing this? You know, are you facing a divorce situation? Does your spouse have a, a decent sized retirement account that is likely gonna be split? How are you handling it? Do you need the funds or, or um, you know, or do you not need them? Do you plan to roll the money over? Are you 
pretty young in the situation, say in your 30s or 40s with, with, with minor children. How are you um, planning to, you know, what are you planning to do, you know, balancing off the restrictions, you know, the benefits of no tax penalty, but the restrictions of, of you know, where the money has to go and such. I'd, I'd be very curious to hear what, what's going on in your life, if you have any comments or, or personal situations that are interesting. Have you run into any interesting plan rules, like I talked about, have you been restricted or found an overly generous uh, plan document, a 401k that's, that allows a lot of flexibility or is very restrictive? With this type of uh, situation, I'd love to hear all that. If you have that, send, drop some comments below. It could be helpful for other viewers. I would like to hear what's going on too. And if you have questions or things that you want me to comment on, I would I would love to do that also. So please feel free to discuss below. I'd love to hear your comments on that. I plan on um, following this up. There's uh, some supplemental topics to this. Uh, the idea of should you take the cash now or later about income spreading. Um, should you you know, if you're taking money out of retirement accounts, should you take it lump sum? Should you find smarter ways to spread that money out over a certain period of years? That's going to be a topic of another video I'm going to do. I think that's a super important topic, and that came up yesterday in a client conversation, income spreading. So look out for that. I'm also planning a video on um, something I think for a lot of my uh, types of clients would be interested in, and that is, uh, you know, serving on the board of a startup company or a, a local nonprofit or something. A lot of you have gotten to the point of, uh, you know, of success in your career where you're, maybe you've been asked to serve on the board of a, of a startup firm, or you've been asked to serve on the board of a, a, a charitable institution. And uh, whether you're getting, you know, are you getting paid, are you getting stock for that or anything? There are risks involved. I'm going to bring uh, my friend and risk expert and um, subject matter expert and, and teammate Steve Joyce in on that. Uh, and to make that discussion to help you think about what you what you need to be thinking about when you decide to take a you know get involved with one of those opportunities. So that's coming up in the video also. So those will be two upcoming videos that I think will be very helpful to the people I work with, the type of people that I typically work with, and you know who knows who else. So please enjoy and, and thank you again for watching this. Chris Grandy over and out from Belmont, starting to get some warm weather here. Uh, you will see more videos from me outside as the weather improves and uh, I look forward to making them and I look forward to your comments. Thanks again for watching. And by the way, if you liked the, if you really enjoyed this video, please click the like button. It helps with um, you know YouTube know that I'm you know I'm, I'm a legitimate video person here. I'm not some doing some crazy stuff. Also feel free to share, subscribe. If you are on YouTube, subscribe so you get notifications of these videos. I send notice of these in my email newsletters, but not right after they come out. So if you want more timely exposure, subscribe, and then also subscribe to my newsletter because I also uh, keep you updated on my seminar dates, what I'm working on, uh, things I'm thinking about, and these videos, and, and more. So look forward to having you be a subscriber and enjoying the community in some way if you're not already a client, subscriber, friend, etc. So thanks again for your time. Have a great day.